This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 95, with Nathan Chan. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today. You know, some people use a blog or a podcast or YouTube videos for their primary platform to build, launch and grow their brand and their business. My guest today utilized a digital magazine as his primary platform to grow his brand and business. And in today's episode, he's going to share how to create a digital magazine from scratch. My guest today is Nathan Chan. Nathan is the publisher and editor of Founder Magazine, a digital magazine for young entrepreneurs on the App Store and Google Play Store. Nathan launched Founder in March 2013 from his bedroom, and in a small period of time, it has become a top 10 ranked business and investing magazine on the App Store. As publisher of Founder, Nathan was a finalist for Publisher of the Year for 2014 in the Digital Magazine Awards. He has had the pleasure of interviewing some of the most accomplished entrepreneurs around the world, namely Sir Richard Branson and Ariana Huffington, and many, many more. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can tweet me on Twitter at MC Lobsher and email me at info at cashflowninja.com. Please remember to also join our mailing list by signing up at CashflowNinja.com or texting CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. As some of my listeners may know, I live in Newtown, Pennsylvania, a town that's about 45 minutes away from Philadelphia, the birthplace of the United States, the home of the cheesesteak, the Rocky Steps, and also the hometown of the beloved founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin believed an investment in knowledge pays the best interest, and early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. The Cashflow Ninja have aligned itself with partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient dense, and earth grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code get on it at cashflowninjahealth.com. Our wealthy partner Fundrise gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audiobook at CashflowNinjaBook.com. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja Podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Well, Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, MC. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you please share a little bit about your background and your journey as an entrepreneur and how you got started? Sure thing. So I've been an entrepreneur for about, I'd say about four years. Um, my first business is the business that I run today. It's called Founder Magazine. Uh, we're essentially a, a, a digital media company that produces content for entrepreneurs and startups founders. I started it March 2013 uh, from my bedroom just as a digital magazine. Uh, and um, the first day I launched, I made $5.50. So the magazine's a... Uh, a magazine, it's a digital magazine, monthly publication in the App Store and Google Play Store. And uh, when I started it, 
I, you know, when I started this business, I knew nothing about apps, nothing about publishing, nothing about design, nothing about editorial. Um, this is my first business, so I, I just kind of scratched my own itch around being curious around what it takes to build a, build and grow a successful business. And, um, yeah, I started the business while I was working my day job. It cost me about $3,000 off the back of my credit card. And, uh, what, three and a half years later, uh, now we're you know, uh, a multi-million dollar company. Well, oh, fantastic. Now, and you've done something quite unique here too because uh, the majority of digital entrepreneurs, when they're looking at creating a platform for their business, they choose a blog or a podcast, which you have a fantastic podcast now, but you didn't initially start with one, or a video mm. channel. Uh, you chose a digital magazine. So what made you decide to utilize a digital magazine for your platform? To be honest, MC, I didn't know this space, this space that you speak of, the way people build platforms. I just got lucky, man. I just thought, you know what, um, I think this is a go. And I just thought that I'm going to build this magazine out. And I identified that there wasn't really a magazine in the space serving aspiring novice stage and especially young founders and entrepreneurs. And, you know, it was only as time went on that I realized, you know, the whole online kind of entrepreneur space and this space that you're speaking about where people build platforms. Um, a lot of people that build platforms, they have a personal brand. I have a personal brand, but, you know, founder is its own own living separate entity that's much bigger than myself. So I'm trying to really build an entrepreneurial brand. That's, that's house, it's a household name. Um, so, yeah, to answer your story, MC, I wish I could say that it was all strategy, man, and and uh, it was like a jigsaw falling into place, but <laughs> no, it, it was just literally just uh, I'm a happy kind of go lucky kind of guy and just kind of fell into it and it just turned out that way that um, having a magazine, I didn't know it at the time, was it was just an, is, is still this, to this day an incredible way to build influence. And it's just got so much more perceived value as opposed to a blog or a podcast or a book or a video show. You know what I mean? Yeah, it absolutely does. And yeah, no, I mean, I like it that it was an itch that you wanted to scratch and something that you were looking for uh, to, that you were interested in and learning more about. And then as you're kind of developing this, you realize, well, wow, there's a ton of other people that are just as interested <laughs> as I am in this as well. Mm, yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, it's been a great journey thus far, man. Let's start how, uh, talk about how you created this digital magazine and some of the challenges that you faced uh, starting it. Can you share a little bit what the startup phase was like and some of the costs that were associated with starting this digital magazine? Yeah, sure thing. So you're always going to have to pay for a designer. That's one of the biggest things. Um, and you want to make the design amazing. So for us, we pay, you know, a very big emphasis on the design. And this is not just for the magazine now. This is for the, every piece of marketing collateral we put out and for the whole brand. So that's kind of, you know, that's that's one of the first costs that people need to consider. You need to find a great art director to put the magazine together every month. Then the second cost is, you know, you have to think about the platform, right? Whether it's a print magazine, whether it's, you know, that, that you're going to put into to news news agencies and, uh, you know, magazine stores, whether it's a digital magazine where you just want to house, you know, you can house it on something like uh, Flipsnack where it's just on the web or you can house it on something like, you know, uh, in the App Store, in the Google Play Store. So there's many different places you can house it um, for us we're not a print magazine. We're only digital. Um, we actually will be doing limited edition print runs of the Branson issue in the near future, which is pretty going to be pretty exciting. So we're not going to do a monthly subscription with the print. We do do a monthly subscription with the digital. Uh, but, you know, for us, you know, we want to tap into the App Store's platform and the Android Store's platform and create an app and do a truly, you know, great experience on your iPad, your iPhone or mobile tablet device. So you know you need to you need to you need to find off the shelf publishing software to be able to do that. Um, there's many you know as many off the shelf publishing softwares that allow you to create the app, allow you to house the magazine issues in each app. 
uh, and allow you to manage and maintain it. So the so the tool and platform of choice that we chose was Magcast, M-A-G-C-A-S-T, and uh, that's that's been a great tool for us um, because it's very simple, uh, it never breaks. And uh, it's just, yeah, it, it just works. Um, I know that there's a few others out there that are quite expensive. Uh, we spent two grand, we spent, yeah, about two grand US on this platform. So that was a cost, the design cost. Then there's also the editorial cost. You know, you have to put together content. You have to have it proofed. You have to have it edited. You have to have it written. Uh, and that's those are the main costs that you need to consider. You know, if you want to put it in the app store, you have to spend $100 you know, a year to have a license to produce apps in the app store. Um, if you want to... You know, you've got to have a website, obviously. Uh, it's one of Apple's terms and conditions. When I first started the magazine, um, we had a basic landing page, and we had that basic landing page just to keep Apple happy uh, for oh, at least a year and a half before we actually relaunched the website and actually created a blog and started producing content for the blog, which is pretty funny looking back because we really really have a big focus now on, on producing great content for the blog and on the site um so yeah that's that's the kind of costs involved and and how people can get started yeah no, that you guys have a ton of valuable information out there on your blog and your podcast what is the cr creation process like right now so do you outsource a lot of the writing um, and then you edit it. Um, t talk us a little bit through the creation process of each magazine. Yes, sure thing. So thank you, firstly, for the kind words, MC. Um, we do our best. Uh, so in regards to the creation process, with full transparency, I don't do any writing. We have an amazing team that allows us to, you know, produce content at scale. So, you know, we have a full-time content person. We have a part-time editor. Um, I'm always helping with the editorial direction, which is really, really key. Then also, also another thing that I'm always trying to do and work on and think about is is how can we, you know, make our content even better and produce more of it. Uh, we have an AV editor in Hungary that's always editing the podcast, uploading it. We have two virtual assistants that, uh, you know, get blog posts ready, get all sorts of things ready in the background and running all sorts of tasks. And then we have like, you know, anywhere between 10 to 15 contract writers that we can use at any one point in time to produce content for us. Um, so, yeah, I don't do any writing myself. I've never been a great writer. I would like to for fun, um, but for now, it just doesn't look like there's the opportunity there for me. Um, in fact, I'll probably this time next year step down from doing the interviews, to be honest, just because I have to work on, on focusing on scaling the business. So, yeah, um, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because, I mean, I could just see as you were talking through succinctly how you're scaling it and scaling it and, uh, you know, um, where you started it, basically. And that was tying into my next question because you started this working while you were still working full time and you started building this to now, you know, you're basically starting to hand off more pieces of the business to uh, work on your business and scaling this and growing this further than just working inside of it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. 100%, man. I'm doing whatever I can to do that. Now, let me ask, because I, I know what, you know, I, I had the same thing, obviously, with a podcast, trying to get guys to come on the show initially when you started the show, right? So what was it like for you uh, just starting out to to try and court some of these big names and then obviously you know sir richard branson shows up um talk about that tipping point in your business if that was one um and just uh, some some of that process of getting that off the ground yeah sure thing so one thing that we always try and do mc is share everything that we learn share everything that we know because that's the ethos of the brand right to to help and serve and I guess show people and, and, and help equip entrepreneurs with all the tools and resources necessary to build, you know, an, an extremely successful business. So 
I think we would be doing a disservice to our community if we knew certain things <laughs> to help them grow and we held it back. So our ethos at Founder is, is we share our best stuff, everything that we know, we all our secret sauce, anything that we know, we, we produce content around it. So to answer your question, this is a common question that we get. So we so I got JC, you know, JC wrote an in-depth 5,000 plus word blog post on how we get interviews with hard to reach people. It's a step-by-step guide. It's you know, 100% free. If you want to go to foundermag, F-O-U-N-D-R-M-A-G dot com forward slash get interviews. Um, there's no opt-in. It's just a blog post. You don't have to sign up to an email list. And pretty much, long story short, um, you know, we've broken it down. But I'll give you a few pieces of the puzzle um, for those of you that, that don't have time to check out the blog post. Uh, and now the first thing is having a magazine is a great way to build influence, um, as mentioned before. Then it's, uh, and then the second thing was you need to find the gatekeeper. So for me to find Richard Branson, um, you know, I had to find his head of PR to, to make that deal happen. Then the third thing is you need to, I guess – be prepared to follow up and don't stop following up until you get a no. You treat it like sales, man. Yeah. And you also treat it like a mutually beneficial exchange in value. So you have to look, uh, like any good partnership, what that person wants and what that person needs and how you, with your podcast or blog or YouTube series or, or magazine, can help that person. And that's all we did, man. I know it might sound easier than what I'm saying. It is, you know, describing it. It was definitely hard, no doubt about it. But, um, you know, we were lucky enough to make that happen in the first four months of starting Founder. And, uh, you know, I spoke to the right person and I wrote, you know, I, I, I presented a good case and, uh, you know, lucky enough and, and he was kind enough to, to share his time. So, yeah, that's that's how it all came about. I love the the content that you guys put up and everything that you guys do learn as you, as you were mentioning earlier you guys do share that um and that ties into my next question too of what is the future of founder because there's a lot of different moving parts now you guys are doing some amazing things there um what is your vision for the 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 platform that you've created Oh thank you so much MC for the kind words man um well I think we just got to keep keep producing content, like really great content at scale. Um, but there's going to be, you know, more more and more as time goes on, a strong differentiation. Like 99% of our content is free. It's going to stay that way. But then that 1% will be premium content. And uh, as time goes on, I think we're probably going to have a pivot where – we we you know we've got a we've got right now we've got a membership site called Founders Club. I've got a few separate courses and you know we've got the magazine and we've got a few few products out there. But I think as we start to scale up product, eventually uh, one day, probably a couple of years from now, we'll have so many courses um, solving you know ed- educational courses that solve uh, people's problems that they're you know telling us they need help with. Like for example. Uh, we surveyed our audience, and it turns out 30% of our audience haven't even started a business yet. Now, this is a small sample size. Uh, we did a survey of, you know, 2,500 people out of 250,000 on our email newsletter, and that was some of the data that came back. So, you know, we want to we want to solve that problem for people, you know. So, you know, we're going to create a, a course, but we're not going to teach it. We're going to get others to teach it, and that's, the, that's you know, the strong thing that we try and always do. We don't claim to be gurus and you know, claim to be experts. If we are really good at something, we'll put out content around it, and, and hopefully it helps and resonates with people. But, yeah, we're still a young brand, so you know, we, get, we get others to teach. And um, I guess we're, what I'm getting to is eventually we're going to have you know, a lot of premium content, a lot of more free content. So let's, instead of producing three blog posts, epic blog posts a week, we're going to try and work towards doing seven next year. 
And, uh, you know, instead of having two to three courses and all these other products, we want to have at least 10 next year. Eventually, to, to bundle it all in, so we focus in on one product, and that will be found a premium, which will be just a subscription-based membership, and uh, it'll be similar to, you know, if you're an accountant and you join the CPA, if you're a founder, you join Founder Premium. And uh, I guess that's um, where I see things going, and uh, that's what will allow us to scale. I'm, I'm very big on uh, predictability, recurring revenue, and yeah, I think there's that that uh, we're building this amazing platform and ecosystem. So there's many different ways, many different ways we can approach it. There's all sorts of things we can do, but you know, the biggest focus when my vision for the brand is is producing just uh, just a content machine that. Uh, just generates ridiculous amounts of value to tens of millions of people around the world and uh, we'll just keep doing what we're doing now and yeah like you know we'll have fun with it too you know we're going to do a youtube tv series two parts next year 10 episodes each you know that's more content we're going to eventually look at um, finding people to do to produce a podcast network which would be a ton of fun. You know, we can eventually create Founder India or Founder Africa. Um, we get requests every single day for people wanting to bring, you know, uh, I guess that the Founder brand and, and tackling their exact region, kind of like what Forbes have done. Yeah. Um, I know, for, yeah, like Forbes Philippines, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, there's many different ways we can grow and scale the brand, but um, – yeah, that's my vision, man. Just just uh, help more people and and uh, produce a platform that's that's a I guess a, a household entrepreneurial brand that uh, people recognize and know and and can credit to to helping them somewhere along the way in their journey. That's exciting stuff. Really, really exciting stuff. You have built an amazing team uh, for founder uh, virtually. Um, what advice can you give to entrepreneurs and investors out there that's trying to build companies and organizations virtually to replicate similar success to what you have had? Yeah, sure thing, MC. And I think, you know, with full transparency, I think it's a work in progress. I think we haven't mastered the team building culture piece at Founder, and that's something I'm learning as a leader. Um, I do have a business coach on this that, that helps me with this particular thing. Uh, quite heavily because I think it's an important part when you look to to scale your company and that is to get the right people on the bus but also get that team aligned with the vision and also build an amazing culture. So yes, we do have a remote team but we're working more and more towards having the core team here in Melbourne. So it's kind of hybrid where we can we can pull pull resources, uh, you know, I guess um, online and virtually. But you want to, I think, you want to have the core team in, you know, whatever region or, or whatever, not whatever city, you know. I think, or you you just go the other way and you just make a call. You got to make pretty much. Long story short, you've got to make a call. You've got to make a call whether you go full virtual, full distributed, or you go hybrid where you do, you know, distributed for certain things like design or editing, things that where people can work quite autonomously um, and then you do core team in a certain city around, you know, very, very incredibly, you know, important integral parts of the business where it kind of you need to move fast and, and you need to make decisions and it's like the decision hub. Um, I think that's the way that we're going. We're building out the core team more and more here in Melbourne. So we have a total of seven people that are part of the company and four are here in Melbourne. Then we have a handful of contractors. And, um, you know, I think that's that's my advice. It's not. It's definitely not easy. Um, and uh, I think, you know, if you can, you know, you build the, the core team, you know, in, in, your, in your city where you are. But if you want to do fully distributed, you've got to work out a way to keep people aligned with the vision and, and constantly keep in touch with them. You know, people, um, you know, they've got to be excited about their work and you've got to get the right people on the bus. That's a, that's even more important. And for me, I'm just looking to work with people and get people to join the team that are hungry, that have, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit that, uh, I guess are humble and, um, 
you know, I, I guess uh, you know might might not have the skills, but but they've got the 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 hunger, and you know, I, I just do whatever I can to find out what they need. No, that's that's great advice. Doing some of the research on on you guys and f- been following you for a while, uh, the growth has been amazing, and the the w- some of the things that you guys have been able to achieve and do um, as far as growing uh, your list, your email list, and uh, on Instagram has been amazing to watch. Are there some strategies that you can share overall, and then specifically on Instagram of uh, how you guys were able to successfully uh, grow so rapidly and quickly? Yeah, sure thing, man. So we've been on Instagram for about two years. Uh, we're closing in on a million followers, and it's all super organic, and we haven't bought followers or anything of the sort. And uh, we've been able, in the past two years, build an email database of um, over 300,000 We've actually just uh, had to remove a few people from that email database because we're working towards building an email database that uh, is extremely responsive. So now it's closer to 250,000. So long story short, um, the way we've done it is we've produced epic content at scale. So awesome content that our audience loves on a consistent basis that looks good. On a, and we've just done that for a very long period of time. We post, you know, five to seven images a day manually on our phone, um, and we also um, never miss a day. We didn't be doing this for two years. We've only missed one day of posting. Um, we've made sure our stuff looks great, so people have that trust. And then, you know, we've made sure we've posted content our audience loves. And then, lastly. Um, We've, we've, we've found that, you know, influencer marketing is extremely powerful. So we've done whatever we can to get people to share that content uh, and share it far and wide on Instagram. So, you know, finding people to do, you know, shout outs with, um, that's what it's called, doing S for S, you know, shout out for shout out, share for share or paid shout outs. Uh, we've probably spent, you know, I'd say at least ten thousand dollars on shoutouts, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, uh, but that's only for lead generation, not to grow our follower base. And pretty much, um, yeah, it's it's been an incredible platform for us. But uh, yeah, those are the biggest key things that people on a on a higher level people need to, uh, I guess, focus on. We do have um, some epic guides if people want to check them out. You can go to foundermag f o u n d r m a g dot com forward slash free. Um, there's a free epic guide that we put together, super in depth, um, beautifully designed. We don't hold back. Uh, that that uh, might be of use if you want to find out more there as well. Yeah, no, I I will definitely put those in the show notes. Those are fantastic guides. Um, I've really learned a lot from them. Uh, and you know, again, you guys are very generous with what you're sharing out there. One habit I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects. And learning new skills. What are you currently studying and what skill sets are you currently learning? Probably biggest one is getting the right people on the bus and understanding what it takes to scale a company. Um, they're, they're the biggest, they're being a great leader. They're the biggest skill sets that I'm studying and learning right now. Um, I'm also I'm also studying um, Facebook ads, which is an interesting one, uh, something that I want to master as well. And just um, I'm always looking at what other people are doing, uh, whether it's in our industry, in the space that we serve, or in a totally separate space, which is a great way to get ideas. Right. Nathan, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and, wor- and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and you are only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Um, I think the first one would be to never stop learning. Um, I think that's key. And if you if you have that, I guess, curiosity to learn and learn with fun and, and, and understand what it takes uh, to, to build and you know a successful life or you know being happy um, and, and do whatever makes you happy then that's that's a good start if you want to build a successful business understand that it has to be an obsession if it's 
if it's not an obsession, you're not going to make it. You just have to want it bad enough. And then the last one is, I guess, you know, try and be grateful. Uh, we live in a, a day and age and society where people want things straight away. You want things faster. And, you know, sometimes it's good to just take stock and understand that, you know, wherever you are right now in your life, you are there because of the choices that you've made and you should take responsibility for them and just have gratitude because, you know, wherever you are, you know, there's somebody out there that's probably worse off than you. Um, so, you know, and, and the cool thing is you can change that. You know, we, we live in a world now where there's so much opportunities. Uh, you want to start a business, you can start it tomorrow with little to no capital. It's one of the best times in, in history to ever start a business. It's one of the best times in history to do whatever you want to do, wherever you are around the world. So, yeah. So true. Fantastic advice. How can my audience learn more about you, your company, your podcast, and just stay in form of all the projects that you're involved with? Um, you can just go to founder.com, F-O-U-N-D-R.com, and also um, would love your support. We've produced a greatest hits album for a coffee table book. It's uh, being crowdfunded on Kickstarter as we speak. Uh, it's a physical, it's our first physical print project, coffee table book. Um, it's nothing of its of its kind. If you go to foundermag, F-O-U-N-D-R-M-A-G dot com forward slash book, uh, that's where you can find out more. Nathan, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and just providing so much value to, to my listeners. Uh, it's a, been a fantastic experience and I've had a blast. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Hi, this is MC Laubscher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Valhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining their capital and investments with the financial vehicle of the wealthy, according to the infinite banking concept. If you are interested in learning more, you can email me at info at cashflowninja.com and I will send you a copy of Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Thank you for joining my guest, Nathan Chan, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja podcast today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes, and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I really have been humbled by your support and feedback, and if there's any way that I can provide more value to you and serve you better, please reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the offers from our partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient dense, and earth grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GET ON IT at CashflowNinjaHealth.com. Our wealthy partner, Fundrise, gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest-quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audiobook at CashflowNinjaBook.com. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cashflow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. 
This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.